Well, welcome to this week's worship. I'm Reverend Peter Hibbets, and it's great to have you watching us on our YouTube channel. Wherever you are, I hope that you will know that God is with you. God is with each one of us wherever we are, and I hope that you uh, will know God's presence and God's Holy Spirit revealed to you uh, as you join with us as we sing some songs and we uh, share in some times of prayer as well as opening up uh, Psalm 130 a little bit later and hearing some reflections on that. It's interesting that even though we haven't been able to be in uh, worship and sing together uh, during this time, everyone at the same time, and it might have seemed like the music has faded somewhat. The song that we're about to sing to begin our worship talks of how it's not about our singing, it's not about our buildings, it's not about the ability to be in one room together, but it's all about Jesus. It's all about what God has done for us and God's love for us. And so as we begin our worship with this song, I hope that you will know um, God alongside you.
let's spend some time in prayer now and I'm going to give a few moments where you may want to um, pray your own prayers it might um, just be a, a period of silence if you want to pray aloud even though you may be uh, in a room on your own or, or, or with somebody else if you feel confident to pray aloud God can hear those prayers but God can also hear the prayers of your heart so uh, we'll have a, a few moments of, uh, of quiet on, on the recording and if you want to pray aloud or pray your own prayers or just sit in silence in God's presence for a few moments you can do that uh, as we pray uh, in rejoicing of the God who is with us uh, who hears our prayers uh, and is alongside us in all things so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are indeed alongside us and that when the music fades and times are difficult and we feel lonely or isolated, God, we know that you are always with us, always alongside us by the power of your Holy Spirit. You are the God who flung the stars into space, who created the earth on which we live, who spun it to give us day and night, who tilted it to give us the seasons, who sustains it and sustains each one of us. Every breath that we breathe is given by you. And we know that even when we are isolated and alone, you are alongside us by the power of your Holy Spirit, the God who moves beyond locked doors, the God who moves into lonely places, the God who walks every step, who is in front and behind, to the left and to the right. And so, God, we praise you, the only God worthy of praise. God, we come to you to turn our eyes to you, to dwell in your presence, to give you the praise that you deserve. And God, we pray that you will be glorified as we gather in all our different homes at different times during the week. God, we pray that you will unite us. To take a few moments maybe to speak out your own words of praise to God. Bring before him your prayers or just to sit in silence for a few moments. so God we thank you that you hear our prayers that you are with us that you are faithful a faithful God Amen Lord I come before your throne Lord I come before your throne of grace I find
Well, this morning's reading comes from Psalm 130, and I'm reading in the New Revised Standard Version. Psalm 130, and the words should be on the screen. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and his, in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for the Lord in the Lord. With the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be inspired by your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What are you watching and waiting for? It feels like a real limbo stage at the moment, doesn't it? We were told to lock down and we look forward to being unlocked. Lockdown ended and then we were told to restrict masks, social distance, keep to six, stay outdoors if we can, no singing in church. And then as restrictions are lifted, we're told that cases are rising and instead we must exercise social responsibility, whatever that means. Many have been shielding, of course, since before we locked down. They've never been free, perhaps. And for many, this has been the longest night ever, the longest time of waiting. Perhaps what we're waiting for is to feel safe. But no one can announce that. Somebody can't come on the news and say, we will feel safe from September the 1st. Actually, it depends on who you are, how you feel, what your circumstances are. The idea of a universal Freedom Day was always something, I think, of a red herring I was personally looking forward to the reopening of church and then to the lifting of restrictions on worship and particularly being able to sing. And we are allowed to do that in our church buildings now. But I'm still looking forward to the ability to mingle together, to not worry about the contact of a handshake shake or a hug, to be able to have tea and coffee and chat together. Whilst we have congregations meeting separately, simultaneously, I think we're still a little bit disunited. Whilst folk are not here because they don't feel safe yet, we're still disunited. We've done a lot of waiting. Two weeks ago, my eldest daughter's school bubble burst, a COVID case in her class, and they were all sent home to self-isolate for 10 days. She waited. She was actually planning her escape, a sleepover on the night that she was freed. Then on the day that she was freed, we got another call to say that our 11-year-old's bubble had burst. More isolation in the family. And Eleanor couldn't have friends to our house, despite being personally free. So more waiting for her as well. Psalm 130's analogy is, I think, a wonderful one for this liminal space that we find ourselves in. This limbo, this waiting game. It talks of watchmen. The Hebrew word translated as watchman means one who looks out. One who spies or one who watches. Watchmen at the time of Psalm 130 were guards responsible for protecting towns and military installations from surprise enemy attacks or other potential dangers. Ancient Israelite cities often stationed watchmen on high walls or in watchtowers and their job was to keep watch. I guess it must have been a nervy job, constantly on the edge. What's coming? Is it going to be a threat or a blessing? There's no relaxing, no closing of your eyes, no stopping or looking away. Have you ever felt that way? At the beginning of the pandemic, we watched those 5 p.m. daily briefings from Downing Street, keen-eyed and attentive. But then the days became weeks and months, and even the BBC stopped broadcasting them in their entirety. I wonder if part of the fatigue that we may feel now is from watching and from waiting how long could you be a watchman before your attention would waver? As an undergraduate, I had many campus jobs. One was a pool lifeguard. 
the fun swim that I used to have to supervise was quite engaging. I had to watch for if anyone was running or jumping in or diving where they shouldn't. The worst one was the trim swim. Lanes of swimmers going up and down and up and down. It was a bit mesmerising, a bit like hypnosis. I mean, how do you stay alert at that point? I used to profile the swimmers, actually. What was their age, their risk factor? I would pace up and down the side and, and circle the pool. I counted the bricks in the wall opposite and the tiles in the deep end and the shallow end. There's only so many things, though, that you can do to stay alert. Eventually, you're left watching the clock, longing for the end of the shift. What about you? Are you a good watcher, a good waiter? We have recently had a puppy in the Hibbert's household. You may have heard his name Wesley, which I think is a good name for a man's dog. But my children, it turns out, are not good waiters. When we decided we were going to have Wesley and we knew when he would arrive, we'd get the children asking us, how many sleeps are there, Daddy, until Wesley comes? 14, 13, 12. And now we're waiting for his second jabs so that we can take him on walks. In a way, he's got the puppy version of self-isolation. He's got to be double jabbed before he's allowed out. How much longer can you wait for the end of this pandemic, though? For a feeling of safety. What is it doing to your mental health as you wait? Perhaps you're watching the clock. The trouble is, though, that there's no clock, really, because it's not about dates. It's about data, or so we're told. That's probably true for you. You'll feel safe when you hear the cases drop, the infection rates drop, or maybe talk of herd immunity and vaccination rates being above 90%, perhaps. Lower numbers of cases in your community might help, but there's no clock to watch. Actually, for an Old Testament watchman, there was no clock to watch. There was no uh, watches or the, no timepieces so that they could tell what time their shift would end. And in the deep, impenetrable darkness, they could simply watch for the morning, the glimmer of light on the horizon. Can you imagine watching for that? How dark does it feel to you right now as you watch and wait? How light has it become? Perhaps you're still in the depths and you just want to cry out as the psalmist does in verse one. You know, the psalms are wonderful for this. Walking us through every season of the soul in a faithful example, deeply honest and completely God-centered, wonderfully descriptive, especially of the despair of the soul. And yet they bring us the opposite of despair. They bring us hope. Psalm 130 is described as a testimony of trust in the Lord. It's post-exilic. That means that Israel was scattered. They were not together. They were not united. And so they longed for and waited for that time when they would be reunited as a nation. Does that sound familiar? And what do they do as they wait? Well, they cry out to God for they know that best of all, God is with them. It's a prayer for mercy. It's penitent. And we too would do well to be penitent for what we've made the church. Perhaps God is using this time to turn us to him, challenging us to change, to forge a new normal, to look back to him and worship him in spirit and in truth. But there is forgiveness. Israel will find a way back. God is not finished with them yet. God is not finished with us yet. And we wait. But we don't wait in despair, for we know that the morning will come. The certainty for the watchman is that his shift will end. The sun will rise. The morning will come. Not just that, but for Israel, there is still his word in which they can hope. The word that tells them that God has a plan for them, that the world will be saved through a Messiah from their nation. One to save all humanity, to give them a future. Perhaps there are scriptures that you can hold on to in the darkness. What I'd like you to know directly from scripture is that God is all you need. Matthew 6, 26 says, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Or perhaps you need to know that God has got you in his hands. 
It says in Isaiah 41, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you in my righteous right hand. Perhaps you need to know right now that you are not alone. It says in Romans 8, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Perhaps you simply need to know that amidst all this, God is working for good. As Jeremiah 29 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. I wonder what you need to hear during the midst of this in the words of the psalmist. Actually, Psalm 130 is a rallying call to faith in God, no matter how dark it feels, how long it's been or how long it seems. O Israel, it says, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love and with him there is great power to redeem. I know it's hard right now, but your wait should be expectant. You can wait knowing that your wait is not futile. You cry out, declare those promises that we've heard from scripture. For God is listening, God is sovereign, God is powerful, and God is coming. This nature waited, this nation, the nation of Israel waited, and the Messiah came. He came in an unlikely form, a baby in a manger, He came in an unlikely way, a suffering servant. He came through unlikely events, through death on a cross. But he came for you and for me. And when he did, he declared that it is finished. He declared the morning. He declared the light. He declared the freedom day. He declared safety. He declared victory. So hold on. Because no matter how dark it gets and how far away the morning seems, the morning is coming. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of
Let us pray. Creator God, we know that you are sovereign, that you are in control. You are all we need. You sustain your creation. The birds of the air have all that they need. You are with us wherever we find ourselves, whatever our season of the soul. Give us strength when we are surrounded by our fears and anxieties. Wonderful Saviour, because of your death and resurrection, there is now nothing that can separate us from you. May we in our darkness, in our darkest times, remember that you are with us. Holy Spirit, we look for your movement. Lead us in spirit and in truth. Reveal your plans to us that we might join you in building your kingdom. Amen. Before we have our blessing, we conclude our worship with the wonderful hymn. And I hope that you can maybe stand wherever you are. You can sing it out, even if you're on your own or, or just a, a pair or a family, you can sing together. Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory thou over death has won.
our final blessing then. Watch and wait for God. With God's arrival comes love. And with God's arrival comes generous redemption. No doubt about it. He'll redeem us. Buy us back from captivity to sin. And so go into the world to wait and watch for what God is doing. And to look for when and where God's spirit moves. For the glory of God. Amen. God bless you folks. See you soon.